Welcome back to part two. So, there are literally limitless variations of these energy patterns, and everything is made of them. And in a personality or destination sense, these patterns were pointed to as far back as Plato, probably even farther, but the modern day sage who dusted them off and brought them into the light is none other than the legendary Carl Jung. But he didn't call them energy patterns like I do. He called them archetypal patterns. And since Jung, there's been a plethora of self-professed gurus who have jumped on the bandwagon and standing on the shoulders of Jung, in my humble opinion, they peddle their viewpoints, many of which I might encourage you to ignore. But take a peek at the various archetypal pattern definitions that they have, if you like. Because if you're honest with yourself, you will undoubtedly recognize yourself in many of these patterns. But no one is telling you anything that you don't already know. We already know these patterns. And not only do we know them, we are fascinated by them. We've painted our whole world in them. I mean, these are the things that fairy tales and stories are told of. See if you recognize any of these labels. Have you ever heard of the character known as the king? Or the queen? Or a warrior? Or the princess? Or the lost or abandoned child? Or the knight? Or the prostitute? Or the hero? Or the mother figure? The father figure? The temptress? The fool? the underdog, the victim, the savior, the martyr, the outcast, the rebel, the healer, the judge, the innocent. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And we already know them. I mean, where would Hollywood be without them? We love to mix and match these patterns and watch the outcome, not only on the big screen, but we are also playing out these archetypes on an even bigger screen in our daily lives. Now sometimes we only spend certain patterns in certain situations and this shows up as what appears to be inconsistencies in our personalities. For example, perhaps we are normally very courageous but in certain circumstances we seem to crumble and become helpless and look for guidance. When we do this, we have slipped into a child archetypal pattern in those experiences. And we do this unaware. We are all running these energy patterns. We are these energy patterns manifested in this dimension. That is who you are. Your awareness is wearing these patterns in the form of flesh of this dimension, which we call atoms, vibrating at certain frequencies and patterns so that we seem to be these different things. So, for example, a princess archetypal pattern will always wait in her tower for her knight or her warrior. My parents have these archetypal patterns. My mom is sweet and benevolent and generous because of her princess pattern. She needs and therefore draws a knight or warrior to her to protect her and make her decisions and provide for her kingdom. And when he does, all is right in her world. It is because she is the princess and that is what fulfills the princess pattern. Just as my dad as the warrior or knight was drawn to her so that he could make the decisions and protect the castle and rough up the natives and whatnot. And she applauds him and his masculinity and all is right in his world when she does because that is what the warrior knight is looking for. It's this exchange that draws these two patterns together. Now this is a somewhat rosy example, so let's look at another energy pattern. What happens if you are spinning a victim pattern? You're going to attract your counterparts, just like the princess attracted the knight or warrior. And guess what the counterpart for the victim role is? You are going to constantly attract people that seem to screw you over and over and over. No matter what you do, no matter how clean your bottom shelf seems to be, no matter how hard you visualize the perfect partner or perfect job, you aren't going to get it. It's not in your script. Every show 
will have the same ending. You're going to get screwed because you're running the victim pattern and you will draw out your counterpart. In fact, don't blame them when they show up and screw you. They are only playing the role you assigned them. And this doesn't sound like much fun, now does it? So, how do we know if we're running this victim pattern unaware and are attracting experiences that we don't care for into our lives? We know when, for example, if all of our love relationships end up with us thinking we've been screwed, and not in a good way. So, if you're running the victim pattern, possibly the martyr pattern, this is what's going to happen. And if you keep getting dumped on at work, guess what? You're running the victim or martyr pattern there too. So, are we stuck in these patterns? It certainly sounds like it, doesn't it? But no, it's just that the outcome can't change until we move through the pattern. So when we try really, really hard to change some facet of our life, but we keep striking out, I'll bet you a coffee and a donut that the energy pattern you're expressing yourself through is in conflict with your desire. Do you see? This is so important to hear. I'm going to say it again. We seem to hit a wall in our manifestation ability when what we are trying to do is in conflict with the patterns we are running in that area of our life. So no, victims will not be rewarded. They will never be rewarded. Victims will be screwed. They will attract pattern after pattern into their life, not to punish them, but in order to fulfill their victim pattern. I mean, if you're running a victim pattern, well, you're going to need someone to screw you over, and thy will will be done. But here's the good news. If we change from this type of pattern, we won't be able to attract someone to break our heart or screw us over. You won't be able to. Nothing will click between you and the person, or other energy pattern, who would have normally hung around to disappoint you. There will be no attraction, because the puzzle piece of the disappointer no longer fits into your space of the victim or martyr. So they'll walk right past instead of engaging your world. How about that? Now that sounds much better, doesn't it? So identify the pattern you're running and know that these patterns are us, clothed in the flesh of this dimension. There is no such thing as a human, or anything else for that matter. I hope everyone listening to my voice today will take a long and hard look at their lives and see what they see. And if you can't seem to see, then look at your life impersonally. Pretend it's a stranger's life. What do you see? Write it down on paper if you like. It may help you see it more clearly. Now this takes tremendous honesty. Tremendous. This internal work is not for sissies. But the beginning of all wisdom is to know thyself. And when you identify the patterns you are running, it's a bit like having a crystal ball. You can predict where you're headed, and you can change it. Please click on the link at the end of this video to join me in part three.